Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And in this video, we have a lot to get into as the United States is sending in their warships, not to the Middle East. This time, we're going to get into the latest information from Hong Kong, from Puerto Rico, from Ukraine, from Russia, and of course, the latest updates with Jeffrey Epstein. But before we start, just wanted to let everyone know that YouTube started suppressing this channel very heavily. We are no longer recommended or suggested, so please subscribe to this independent media organization, click the notification button, and share this video to offset a lot of the hooey, malarkey, and freaking shenanigans when it comes to the fight against independent media that's happening right now that you, and you only, could fight right now with just a few clicks of the button. So subscribe, cl click the notification button, and share this video if you liked it, because holy cow, are we being <laughs> slowly bled out. And our existence here is pretty much reliant on you, the amazing audience. There's been a lot of people saying that they were just automatically unsubscribed from our channel, so, so just be aware of that. Now, as you know from watching this channel, that we have been following all the latest developments when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein. We have actually been punished by YouTube for doing so, with all of our videos being confirmed by manual review, deranked in the algorithm. But regardless of that, this is an important story that needs our attention. Our attention on particular issues results in action. And we know that because of how important the mainstream media is and how suppressed the independent media is. And last night, we got a new development from Jeffrey Epstein as we were live on our backup gaming channel. So if you're into gaming, check out our, <laughs> check out our little backup channel. But uh, the news came in that Jeffrey Epstein, and we covered the, this live, was injured and rushed to a hospital after he was found injured in his New York City jail cell after what people are calling a suicide attempt, which found him with neck injuries and leaving many others with a lot of questions. Now, it's important to understand here that this story is predicated on unknown anonymous sources with major media publications like the New York Post running stories last night that it could have been him getting beat up by another person in the jail. Another story ran that it was a suicide attempt. Again, uh, the sources are still anonymous here, and it is very unlikely that it was another cellmate that beat him up since he is in solitary confinement. Suicide here, of course, is the more likely option. Allegedly, investigators are trying to piece together what exactly happened. And of course, people have their own particular specula speculations. Some people are questioning the validity of these reports since Jeffrey Epstein just two days ago decided to appeal the bail denial that he got. He is very well connected. He has gotten off with a slap on the wrist for very heinous acts, which he was supposed to serve life for previously. And many people questioned when he was still waiting to hear about the news of his appeal, why would he want to commit suicide? A lot of people are pointing up that this could have, this could have been an attempt for a cover-up so the public never finds out the true light of the heinous acts committed by Jeffrey Epstein and his establishment elite cohorts. And again, with such big generalizations happening here, with so much speculation and unconfirmed evidence, I think it's best to wait for the developments to come in on this situation before, of course, jumping the gun. Since, of course, many prison stories turn out to be true, which is alleged about this story coming out of the United Kingdom from the Mirror just a few days ago, where they have alleged that Tommy Robinson was again punched in the showers by a 70-year-old man for, quote, acting like a celebrity. According to Tommy Robinson and Rebel Media, this story is not true, and it, and it obviously falls flat on the accusation since Tommy Robinson is in, again, solitary confinement has guards watching him 24-7, and is in a wing of the UK jail that he is staying with, with only two other prisoners, one of them, of course, also being Julian Assange, which he talks to from cell to cell. But the media ran this story as if it was true, and again, I have not seen any evidence corroborating it. And regardless of what you think of Tommy Robinson, if you hate him or love him, the truth always matters in this case, in all cases. Now, an important angle of this story that is not getting that much media attention and that is not filled with baseless claims is the fact that 
Deutsche Bank, a major financial institution in the world, many times ignored internal high-level warnings about their very powerful clients, which the Daily Beast lists from pedophiles to presidents. And it's important to note here that yes, it was Deutsche Bank, which did Daily Beast says reluctantly and belatedly filled a SAR form with the US government warning them about Jeffrey Epstein's suspicious international financial transactions in the millions of dollars which showed and corroborated that he not only lied on his bail hearing but was one of the reasons why this investigation started. And again, this is important to understand here because Epstein was using Deutsche Bank for a very long time. Epstein was an alleged successful hedge funds manager, but again, uh, no one was even aware of any of the trades he made. His wealth, which some people estimated in the billions, was just a total mystery, which again, according to the Daily Beast, was aided and abetted by the international banking organizations that are supposed to be the most trusted in this world. And as this story progresses, we of course will be following it very closely, regardless of the treatment that we receive from YouTube because of it. Now moving forward in other breaking news that happened last night, also during our live stream, we got information from Puerto Rico with the people rushing to the streets in mass celebrating because their governor officially announced that he would resign, which many people have been calling a victory for the people. After, of course, 12 days of protest rocked that U.S. Commonwealth amid the public outcry after 900 pages of internal chats were released of the governor, governor of Puerto Rico, which leaves some people, especially the skeptical people like myself, asking who uh, hacked the governor of Puerto Rico, who stands to benefit during this entire situation. And those answers, of course, will come through the transition of power that will happen because of this resignation. But the people of Puerto Rico, a lot of them are still not satisfied with the resignation, with many people saying that there is still a lot of corruption and a lot of people to remove, with now the governor's justice secretary set to move in to the government's governing position, which many of the protesters and organizers said that they would only continue if this would happen. So this will be, of course, a very interesting situation that is currently unfolding and we will see how it will play out within the next few weeks. And now moving forward in other corrupt government news, we have again more telltale signs from Donald Trump not keeping his campaign promise, aligning himself more with Saudi Arabia to the absurd level where now, and again, this is not the first time, but, but again, now officially as of yesterday, vetoing and blocking House resolutions that would block the weapon sales to Saudi Arabia and the UAE, which was agreed upon by the majority of Democrats and Republicans to the point where Congress has made their voice clear for the people of the world against the nations that are creating the worst humanitarian crisis in the world right now. And Donald Trump's like, nope, we're going to still keep arming the sods, which is absolutely idiotic. Just like using strong arm tactics instead of diplomacy like we're seeing the United States do, as the United States is sending in more U.S. warships off the coast of China as tensions are rising between Taiwan and China that has warned the United States to stay clear of the islands or else risk war. Again, personal opinion aside, there has always been a lot of this hyperbolic talk between China and the United States that is ratcheting up, that is supposed to be something that we should be aware of. And yet, I believe the issue is definitely being underplayed. Now, of course, this is mainly geopolitical posturing by two hard-headed countries vowing for global hegemony, and it should be understood in that context as well. But with the financial worries that are just looming, especially with all the economic bubbles, not just in the United States, but also in China, also specifically with Deutsche Bank, historically speaking, whenever there is financial turmoil, the risk of war always increases, which is something to always look out for. And of course, be ready for. Because geopolitically, there are powers at odds with each other, with alliances on grand proportions that would affect everyone, with small events that could unleash really bad situations. Just like, you know, the small 
Little events that we're seeing unfold right now with the United Kingdom recently seizing an Iranian oil tanker, Iran answering back by stealing and seizing its own British linked oil tanker, which now as of yesterday, the Iranian president actually even suggested a possibility of a swap between the two to resolve the worsening geopolitical situation between them. But again, uh, trade is very important here, as we've been talking about on this YouTube channel, which is why these trade routes and especially trade regarding oil is so vital to the regions. And right now we are seeing Ukraine seize a Russian oil tanker over another incident that happened in November 2008 where Russia had made a similar move of course again in a very important trade route now it's important to note here that Ukraine did release the crew of this seized Russian tanker and there is independent video footage corroborating a lot of this information which Moscow is warning and threatening consequences of which will only deteriorate the situation since of course Ukraine also relies heavily on US EU support even recently with the United States providing lethal weapons to Ukraine a major escalation that was surprisingly done by Donald Trump so uh, yeah a lot of things are uncertain in the world unlike what many politicians say there is <laughs> ambiguity in this world and uh, hey that's just the way life is and the best way to stay on top of things is to understand that they always move quickly that they always change and that you always need to be on top of information this is what we try to provide you as a service as an independent media organization if you thought we did so I want to thank you guys for subscribing sharing donating and keeping us alive because again if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be here that's why Love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.